Welcome to Behold the Real Jesus broadcast brought to you by the Jesus Christ International Church, 325 South High Street right here in Longview, Texas, right across from Kilgore College. Well, we'll give you a cordial invitation to come be with us on uh, Tuesday, Thursday nights for the uh, Serious Bible Student, uh, where we delve into the Word of God in a Bible study at 7 o'clock Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday night. Sunday afternoon, 2 o'clock, we have our worship service, and we count on an honor to be able to come into your homes and your businesses. As we behold the real Jesus, when uh, Jesus said, I and my Father are one, somebody said, well, how could the Father literally be manifest in a body of flesh and blood? If you'll take a look at 1 Timothy 3.16, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Not God, Jr., not the Son of God, not uh, the third person of the Godhead or the second person of the Godhead. God himself was manifest in the flesh. It is the revealed God. Jesus Christ is the revealed God of glory. He is the image of the invisible God. He is the brightness of his glory. He is the express image of his singular person. Hebrews 1, verse 1 through 3. You see, when Jesus said, I and my Father are one, that is a Greek word, heis, which means exactly that. The not one in uh, uh, a union, but one and the self-same spirit. The Greek word, heis. The same we see in 1 John 5, 7 in the epistle of John. There's three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. One and the self-same spirit. You see, the Father is spirit. The Word is spirit. The Word is life. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, it says ghost instead of spirit there because when the Spirit of God, how much of the Spirit of God was in Christ Jesus? He giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Holy Ghost then, he used the word ghost because the ghost is the spirit of a person. It's the same Greek word pneuma as the Holy Spirit, but ghost gives uh, a credence to our Lord Jesus Christ in bearing blood, coming in flesh and blood. Holy Ghost, spirit of a person. Therefore, we have the Father, which is the administrative office of the Spirit of God. He is the Father of all spirits. The Word is the expression office of God, thought, plan, purpose, and will of God. The Holy Ghost is the power office of God. It's as one and the self-same spirit, Father, Word, and the Holy Ghost, and Jesus as a son of God said, I and my Father are one and the self-same spirit. We're one. We're the same spirit. You've seen me. You've seen the Father. I and my Father are one, John 10, 30. Not a separate spirit. Uh, not a binitarian, something less than the Father, the Son, and the Father, is exactly the same Spirit, the same Spirit of God. That Son of God is God manifest in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3.16. Not the Son of God manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. That is the Father Word, the Holy Ghost. The Word was made flesh. The word made flesh, made is going on my e. Flesh is sarka, the whole man, spirit, soul, and body. A human body of flesh and blood, the rational soul, with the mind, will, emotions, imagination, and intellect, and a human spirit, where you have communion, conscience, and intuition. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the Father manifest in a body of flesh and blood. This man that you see in flesh and blood has the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in him bodily, one body. He is the express image of his person, the image of the invisible God. We want to talk about the strong delusion that God himself will stand in the last days because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved but have pleasure in unrighteousness simply because they have denied the only Lord God. We all must come to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Jesus Christ and to a perfect man and to the knowledge of the Son of God. Why the knowledge of the Son of God? 
In Ephesians 4.11, the Son of God, not God the Son, the Son of God, this of God, this flesh is of God. That's the reason it's called the Son of God. The Son is the same Spirit of God, the flesh it's manifest in, the Son of God, not God the Son. Never in the Word of God is Jesus referred to as God the Son, but the Son of God. The of God speaks of Jesus Christ in his revealed, revealed body of flesh and blood. God was revealed, manifest in flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, believing on the world, preaching to the Gentiles, receiving unto the glory. Saint of angels, this is the God that we're talking about, not God Jr., not a second person of the Godhead, for we have him prophesied by Isaiah, Isaiah 9, 5, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall rest upon his shoulder. The only thing to rest upon Jesus' shoulder was the cross. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counsel, the Mighty God, not the Mighty Son of God, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, not the Everlasting Son, because Jesus said, as the Son of God, he said, literally, because he's in flesh blood, the things concerning me have an end. My Father is greater than I. So it's not co-equal. It's not co-eternal. There's nothing in a union here. The Son of God is the Father manifest in flesh, not a union. And my Father are one, not in a union, but one in the self-same spirit. Somebody said, well, here, O Israel, Lord our God is one Lord. That's an ecod. That's a plurality of uh, one. No, it's not. It is one is one. It's very simple. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Well, somebody said, well, the Lord said unto my Lord, well, the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, is Christ. And that's why we want to focus on Christ because Christ is the foundation of for the church. And if we get off of that foundation in any way, no matter what we believe in the Word of God, no matter how much eschatology and how much of the work of God we see, we will not make it simply because whenever the floods came, the winds blew and the flood and the winds beat against the house because it was not founded upon the rock and that rock is Christ. The house will fall, and great will be the fall of it. Why? Because sand shifts. It's tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, looking for uh, sensual things, sensuality, uh, some kind of new thing. But Jesus Christ has been God, always has been God, and will always will be God. You see, the revelation of Christ in Second John, that Christ is he that hath the doctrine of Christ hath both the Father and the Son. Why? Because the Son is the same Spirit as the Father, the Spirit of God, for I and my Father are one. Howbeit, whenever Jesus said in Matthew twenty two forty two, what think you of Christ? Whose Son is he? It was a little S-O-N, sonship question, according to the flesh and blood of the man Christ Jesus. Jesus asked the Pharisees, what think you of Christ? This is a Christ question. Whose son is he? They said unto him, the son of David. Well, he is the son of David according to the flesh, but that's not all there is to Christ. Christ is the man that suffered and died. He is a servant uh, that whom the Lord will be well pleased when he sees, makes his soul an offering for sin. Blood wounded for a transgression, bruised for a nickel piece, the chastisement or peace upon him by his stripes were healed. Yes, but that's not all there is to Christ. The question, Jesus said, what think you of Christ? Whose son is he? They said, the son of David. Then Jesus said that David, and he quotes Psalm 110, verse 1, the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, which is the yod ha wah or Yahweh, or Jehovah, the Lord said unto my Lord, the capital L, small o-r-d, which is Adon. Not Lord, little L-O-R-D, which means master or husband, which Jesus is Lord over 
Longview, Texas, or lowered over USA is Adonai. But that's not what he said. He, Jesus Christ is the Lord, the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. Jesus is saying here that that's not all there is to Christ. Matthew 22, 42, he's the son of David. Well, that's true on that part, but that's not all. For Jesus said, David said in the Psalms, the Lord said unto my Lord, who's the Lord here? The Lord is the same Lord. The only difference is that Adon is the man that reveals the Lord God Almighty. The Lord manifest in flesh is the Lord, which is Messiah, Adon, the man who is God, the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. You see, the Lord here is the embodiment of God revealed, the express image of his person, the image of the invisible God. The Lord here is the invisible Lord Jehovah God Almighty, for God is a spirit. He is invisible. The Lord here is Adon, which is the revealed God in a body of flesh and blood, who is none other than the Lord God Jehovah himself. Revealed. Only one Lord. So the Lord said unto my Lord, who is this Lord? This is the Lord that is this Lord manifest in a body of flesh and blood as a man, which is the Son of God. That man is the Son of God, which is the Lord Jehovah, God Almighty. You've seen me, you've seen the Father manifest in a body of flesh and blood as the Lord. So the Lord said unto my Lord, Set thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David in spirit calls him Lord, Jehovah God Almighty, how is he then his son? And the Pharisees could not answer Jesus. And the Bible says, neither durst any man ask Jesus any more questions. It shut their mouth. We have to give the man Christ Jesus, the God of glory, the, do the glory due unto his name, that he is the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. So every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, Jehovah God Almighty, the Father of glory, to the glory of the Father. He didn't go to the glory of the Son. He went to the glory of the Father, to the glory of the Father. You see, Jesus is God manifest in flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. But somebody said, well, no, the Son of God was manifest in the flesh. No, the Son of God is God manifest in the flesh. He is the Father manifest in flesh. You've seen me, you've seen the Father. He is the image of the invisible God. He is the Father of glory. And my Father are one. Not in a union, not in a hypostatic union, as some denominations preach, but is the God of glory. Are we condemning anyone? Of course not. But as we come closer to the coming of the Lord, being persuaded of this very thing, confident of this very thing, that he that's begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ, until we all come into the unity of the faith, until the knowledge of the Son of God. What is the Son of God? It's the Father manifest in a body of flesh and blood. If Jesus is the Father, then why did he pray to the Father? Well, it's very simple. The man, Adam, as a man of flesh and blood here, by one man's disobedience, sin came to the world and death by sin. God has to have a man to redeem us. Not the spirit of God. God can't die. God can't be tempted. The spirit of God cannot be tempted. Therefore, God looked for a man. He was amazed he could find none. All of sin comes short of the glory of God. None good, no, not one. Therefore, God said, my own arm, my own body, my own flesh and blood, my own body brought salvation unto myself. For God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. God made him a body of flesh and blood to work as a man veil. Here's a veil, a wall, a partition, a separation that separated God from men. Well, to redeem mankind, mankind, all men, back to himself, God became this man. How did he do it? He, in Philippians 2, Paul tells us the semantics of how this happened. God himself, Jesus being in the form of God, made of himself of no reputation. God himself, the Father of glory, 
made himself of no reputation. The no reputation is a Greek word called kino, K-E-N-O-O, which means to be emptied, emptied out of glory, to lay aside one's glory and honor and dignity and uh, humble oneself and take upon them a lower, a lower estate, a lower position. God himself made himself of no reputation to become this man, a man to redeem us. God himself manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16, the father of glory. If you see me, you've seen the father. How did he do it? God made himself of no reputation, no glory. This man for 30 years will work no miracles. God himself has made himself of no reputation, veiled himself in this body of flesh and blood, working as a man in under the law, as an Adam after the fall. And what the law could not do in that it was weak in the flesh, God sending his own son. In the likeness of sinful flesh, not sinless flesh, but in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. How did he do it? He made himself of no reputation. He laid aside his dignity and his glory, his, his honor. He did not cease and desist from being God. He just put a self-imposed limitation upon himself to be this man. So Jesus being in the form of God, made of himself no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant. He took upon him the form of a servant made in the likeness of men. Who? God himself. And being found in fashion as a man, humbled himself to the death, the death of the cross. First John three sixteen. hereby perceive the love of God because he laid down his life for us. Therefore, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. You see, Jesus, God Almighty, before Abraham was, I am. The Lord God being the Father of glory, the Word, the Holy Ghost, God himself, Christ, an Old Testament prophet searching what, what manner of time, the Spirit of Christ that was in them. Jesus is that Christ, the Spirit of God. But he made himself with no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant made in the likeness of man. There's still a middle wall of partition here. Therefore, the man will have his own self-will and will have to pray to the Father until this wall, this middle wall of partition is broken down. Are you saying that that's a Father manifest in flesh? That's exactly what we're saying. Not a second person of the Godhead that's going to go back somewhere, but God himself that will literally humble himself to be that man, making himself of no reputation. Philippians 2.6. Only one time found in the word of God that where God made himself of no reputation to take upon himself the form of a servant. Himself the form of a servant. Made in the likeness of men. Who? God himself made in the likeness of men. Because he makes himself of no reputation. So loved you that God himself came down in a body of flesh and blood as the son of God. The of God's the flesh. The son is the same spirit as the father. I and my father are one. Why did he do that? Because God literally became that man so he could redeem us. He looked for a man, couldn't find one. All of a sudden come short of the glory of God. But as a seed of the woman, she told the serpent in Genesis 3.15 about this Messiah who is God manifest in flesh. He told that serpent, I'm going to put enmity, an enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. And that seed is not seeds as many, but that seed is Christ. And thou shalt bruise his head. And thou shalt bruise his, his heel. The snake will bruise the heel of the seed of the woman, changing the woman's gender from a female to a male. For the woman will bring forth a man child. A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son and call his name Emmanuel. God with us, not son of God with us, God with us. Somebody said, well, that's a very little difference. Oh, it's all the difference in the world. There's a huge valley of uh, uh, gulf distance between Jesus' only doctrine as him being the one and true God and only God than that of a trinity God in three distinct and separate persons as one God in some kind of a union. There is no union in the spirit of God. He is God all by himself alone. Isaiah 44, 24, created all things alone and spanned the heavens by myself. Not God talking to the Son and the Holy Ghost. God himself, God made man in his own image. Genesis 127, by his attributes. You see this man, what we have to see in the body of Christ as we come into more and more truth. 
we have to see who this man is. The man Christ Jesus is that man that came from heaven. He is the son of man. John 3.13, no man that ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man which is in heaven, he is the father of glory. That man is God himself. No man has sent up to heaven but the Lord Jehovah God Almighty that came down from heaven, 1 Corinthians 15. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. That second man, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. The first man, Adam, was of the earth, earthy. The second Adam, the last Adam, is the Lord Jehovah from heaven him, himself, God himself. He makes himself of no reputation for 30 years. He will work no miracles. He will work absolutely no miracle of healing. He will be under governors and tutors, though he be the son of God until the fullness of time. The law says that a high priest will not take office until age 30. Therefore, Jesus, being about the age of 30, will come into his ministry as our high priest. Not after the or ironic prost, uh, uh, priesthood, but as the line of the tribe of Judah, of which there was nothing spoken of that tribe concerning priesthood. The Lord sprang out of Judah, the root of Jesse. He's both the root and offspring of David, the father and the son of David, who? Jesus Christ. For he is the father of glory manifest in a body of flesh and blood. For 30 years, he works no miracles. Then he takes upon him, has no, absolutely no glory for that first 30 years. God made himself with no reputation to be that man. He doesn't work a miracle, doesn't heal any sick doesn't heal anybody, doesn't work a miracle until age 30 when he takes on his priesthood. We take on the priesthood, the high priest, literally being age 30, would lay hands on his son, anoint him with oil, and then speak over him, thou art a high priest in my stead, those three things, and then his son would take over the priesthood in the Levitical priesthood. John the Baptist, being of the course of Abijah under Zechariah, his father, literally was baptized Jesus himself beyond Jordan and Beth Arba, where Jesus was baptized of John the Baptist and the Levitical priesthood of Abijah and laid hands on Jesus, number two, anointed him, put him under water, three, he did not speak over him, there's a voice came from heaven. From that point on, the man Christ Jesus, literally we see the spirit descending as a dove upon Jesus as a sign given to John the Baptist, upon whom you see the Spirit descending. He it is that shall take away the sin of the world and baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. That From that point on, Jesus was there driven of the Spirit into the wilderness there to be tempted of Satan. And after that came out in the fullness and power of God. From that time on, how God anointed Christ Jesus Nazareth, whether by doing good, healing all manner of sickness and disease, it is God, but God has made himself a no reputation to work salvation as a man. Therefore, the man will have to pray to God because there's a middle wall of partition. That is that veil. That is his flesh. Until that flesh is taken away, God is working as a man in under the law, made in under the law in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin to condemn sin in the flesh. Jesus will literally progressively glorify his own human as this man crucifies the flesh with the affections of the lust, allowing the Spirit of God to flow through him. Jesus finally gets up to Gethsemane. All things are fulfilled. He's fulfilled the law as a man through the Spirit. He'll offer himself through the eternal Spirit. God literally working as a man. He said, Father, John 17, 5, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory I have with you before the world was, before I made myself of no reputation to be this man, I want all that glory back. Glorify me with your own self. I, I will Jesus, Jesus go in glory to the glory of the Father, glorified with God's own self. Jesus dies on the cross. There's a great earthquake. The veil rents from top to bottom, the metal wall of partition breaking down between men and God, the man Christ Jesus, uh, who is the Father of glory, going back to his former glory. In his humiliation, the Son of God was a man. In his glorification, he went back to the Father, which he is, was, and always will be to come, God Almighty. Get the book. Get the book, The Great Deception. It talks about Christ and the revelation. Until the next time, behold, the real Jesus. I want to invite you to a very exciting time 
and under the big gospel tent. That's right, neighbor. We're having a big gospel tent revival where we will preach the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and he will confirm his work with signs, miracles, divers, wonders, and gifts of the Holy Ghost uh, according to his will. The Lord God will meet us there. We're going to be at the corner of uh, Interstate I-20, Interstate 20, and uh, Luke 281 right here in Longview, Texas. Uh, that's exit 599 off of Interstate 20 and Luke 281. Right beside the big fireworks stand in that open field, you will see a big uh, gospel tent uh, there starting May the 14th, uh, running nightly, 7 p.m. every night uh, through May the 23rd. <laughs> Come be with us. Uh, if you've never been to a gospel tent revival where miracles and God reveals himself as the only true God, uh, then you ought to come. Take a look at the nations we've been at. Uh, we brought this to Ghana, Kenya, Kasumu, Nakran, all the different places in the world uh, bringing this gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, here is an example of a few outdoor meetings where the Lord Jesus Christ has been preached to the nations. Uh, we have uh, gone internationally. Now we're right here in Longview, Texas, uh, preaching this gospel of Jesus Christ uh, where I know that you will be blessed. Uh, whatever you need, uh, whatever you need in your body, in your spirit, or in your physical body, come expecting God uh, for a miracle. <laughs> he has a miracle with your name on it. Uh, again, that's exit 599, Interstate 20, and Loop 281, uh, where we will have the gospel tent meeting uh, from May the 14th, 7 p.m. nightly, all the way through May the 23rd. Uh, oh, that'll be a great time of the Lord singing, preaching the true Jesus Christ, who is the same today, yesterday, and forever. The Lord God Almighty confirming His Word. Uh, come uh, expecting a miracle.